Hi, I'm Ryan Westbrook, and you're watching Difference Makers, an original content series highlighting current student athletes who are taking their skills and traits home through sports to become difference makers in their corporate fields. Today, we're at Quay Towers in Brooklyn Heights, New York, sitting down with Darnell Schillingford, a senior at Bryant University. Darnell, thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to Bryant University. Thank you. I'm really glad to be here. And yeah, um, I got to Bryant University. My older brother actually played football there as well. So I kind of been familiar with the school for a while. And I knew of the strong alumni network it had, the good business reputation it had. And I know I didn't know what I wanted to do with business, but I knew I wanted to get into business. And with that and athletically, it was the best football school I could play at. That's why I went there. Yeah. Tell us about your football career, man. You started as a freshman. How did you you make your way through the, the school with your your football career? I found that it was a very good place for me to develop myself on my own and with teammates. I had the opportunities to do so. During my freshman year, I got to play on kick return towards the end of the year. So that was a good experience. Gave me some hope, honestly, the light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, I just stuck with it. You know, football gives you a lot of good structure. There's, you know, your time you have to be here, time you have to be there. Now you have time to do that. How do you think those skills that you developed throughout that process, your, your academic load, your calendar, the structure, how do you think they translate into the professional world? Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, like with your traditional nine to five, you got to get there at nine. Probably stay after five, you know, that extra work. And then with same thing with football, like, I can't show up to practice at 930 if it starts right, at nine. Right. Be off the team, you lose your job. So it's definitely like definitely very reflective, I think. And then throughout the day, like when you're doing your work, you know, I have to do this. I have to get this done by two. I have to get this presentation ready for three. Like it's the same thing with school. You know, I have lift in the morning. Then you have classes. Then you have practice. Then you have a night class some nights, maybe. So it's just like you got to find that time during the day, like maybe at 11, I'm doing the thing that I have to do, the presentation I have to have ready for 6.30. So right. it's definitely kind of planning ahead, setting your, like your schedule for the day, something I do. Even if it's just mental, like what do I have to do today and when does that have to be done? Find the time. How do you think sports has prepared you for dealing with different personalities in the corporate setting? I feel like it's the best way to prepare you, honestly. I have 100 guys, probably almost every one guy from every state, at least on the East Coast one guy from every single state so different personalities different backgrounds everyone comes up differently but you get exposed to it you learn to respect people for what they how they've been brought up what they think about certain things how they do certain things and i mean in the workforce i obviously don't have a full-time job yet but i've done internships i've had interactions with people from different parts of the country different parts of the world and you just learn to really respect people for what they think and how they approach things and learn to kind of blend yourself within them and how to lift them up as well. What type of mindset do you have going into those types of uh, days, those types of years where you're saying, I don't know if I have enough to be able to get there, but I know that I'm going to work my tail off to make sure that I'm successful. For me personally, something that I kind of live by is like a story, like a explorer or something. He wants to go take over an island, island much bigger than him, more soldiers by far much more weaponry same thing he had a couple boats he had like i think 12 or 13 boats 300 soldiers against thousands he got to the island he told them to burn the ship <laughs> so they turn around they burn the ships the only way they're going to survive is if they take over the island so right. i was a little dramatic but that's how, you, how i approach things like if you really want it if this is what you have to ask yourself is this what i want do i want this scholarship do i want this internship do i want this job yeah. That's the only thing I can do. I have to, you know, there's no, oh, well, maybe I could just do this. Just fully commit yourself. Like, it's kind of like surrender the outcome. That's right. So you just put yourself fully into it. You mentioned some of the transferable skills that I think all student athletes possess, which make them successful in the work world. What are some of the others that, that you think can translate from the student athlete side to the professional corporate fields? I would say communication, especially with a sport like football. You gotta be able to communicate. You get a call in, you gotta be able to talk to someone else and get it to them as quick as possible. And in the corporate world, that's very big, especially in this world of Zoom and stuff. You know, you gotta be able to obviously send a proper email. You gotta be able to talk on Zoom. You gotta be able to know how to present yourself and things like that. And then I would say um, another transferable skill, I think is passion. Yeah. Football is a sport. I don't think you can, you can play without any passion, you know? You don't have to be outwardly. I would say I'm not a very outwardly person, but you know, you have to care about it. 
And I feel like in the workforce, you need to care about what you're doing. It's very unfortunate when someone else cares a lot more than, or someone doesn't care as much as you. And you're putting your time in and they just show up, swipe their whatever, get paid and then leave. But you're trying to create something, so. One of the things you learn in team sports is that it's not all, always about me, it's about we, it's about us. How do you put aside some of your personal goals for the success for the team? I mean, football, it's easier. Football, it's easier, you know. They're never gonna ask me to throw the ball. <laughs> so I gotta make sure I'm getting my tackles, make sure I'm holding the double team, make sure I get to the quarterback. So it's easier to like have your role, but as I said, I was more of a basketball player. Sometimes it gets hard, you know? Sometimes you just like don't see anybody score and you wanna just go score, do, do it all yourself, but you have to understand like it's easier, it's easier as the we. At the end of the day, that's why I always, I always thought like it's easier as we, like if we can all do it, it's better than just me doing it. Yeah. When you, when you think of the corporate world, world, what do you think the biggest challenges for you personally will be? You know, because sometimes you get to the corporate world and as a rookie, you're saying, oh my goodness, I was, I just left a situation where I was a, the big fish in a small pond. And now I'm going to a situation where I'm the, the small fish in a big pond. What do you think some of the, the, the challenges that you'll see as a rookie will be? I would say, you know, just, is it the right place for me? When now, like, you know, you go to college, it's intricate because you have four years, five years maybe at that college, but, you know, the transfer change and all that, it's transfer portal, stuff like that. In the corporate world, you know, it's kind of more pressing that like, especially in finance, you don't really stay where you are. So my thing would be like, am I gonna kind of, try to kind of like force the leaving? You know, should I stay here for 10 years? Should I stay here for five years? Mm -hmm. Is this where I should be or should I not even come here? So I feel like that's what I think about the most is, am I gonna put myself in the right situation? But also, am I gonna think I need to leave the right situation? Yeah. You know, Pepsi Zero Sugar is all about celebrating rookies as they see success in new roles and opportunities. What qualities do you possess that will make you successful in the corporate world even as a rookie? Yeah, I would say my strength is definitely um, I'm ambitious. I'm very ambitious, you know. I've tried a lot of things in terms of while I'm in school, try to like, you know, make businesses, you know, do anything I can to try to like a little, make more money, make life a little easier. I'd say like, and in terms of a company situation, like it's a great time to be ambitious, you know. It's great, I, we have a principle 10, 80, 10, where you have 10% of the people who really drive and bring people up and like are self-motivated. They have 80% who are just gonna do what they have to do and 10% that are dragging you down. And I feel like I try to put myself in that 10% whenever I go, the top 10% right away. And I feel like from the bottom level of a company, when you start out, that's important to have people that really view themselves as self-motivated early and actually act on it. Yeah. If you could go back to the time I'm at right now, being a senior about to enter the corporate world, what would you, based on the knowledge you know now, obviously, yeah. What would you, how would you position yourself? What would you do first? What would you, what would your mindset be like? You know, the weird thing about an athlete is that everyone's always coming to you, right? And you don't have to go into to anyone because everyone's always coming to you. And as soon as you stop being an athlete, those people aren't coming to you anymore. And now you have to kind of step out and almost chase people in a way. And you have to ask the right question. What I would tell myself is to get out of my shell, to you know, understand that now the world doesn't revolve around you solely as an athlete. You have to go to pursue people. You have to learn how to ask the right questions. You have to learn how to be in the right rooms. And at that point, if you do that, then you can be very successful just through your network, just through the people that, that you've met, through the people that you've engaged with, the people that um, you build businesses with. Um, at times, because you're an athlete, you just lay back and waiting for people. And in the real world, now you got to go pursue people. And those are the things that I would want to say to my younger self, because it took me a long time to understand that. I always thought things were going to come to me. And because they didn't, you're looking around wondering, where, where's all these opportunities? Where are all these things uh, that I want to engage with? And it wasn't because I was aggressive enough. I wasn't aggressive enough to go after some of those things. And a lot of those things passed me by. But now I know how important that network is. Now I know how important pursuing your passion and your purpose is. And now, uh, you know, nothing can stop me at this point. I mean, when I listen to you speak, I, I hear a mature young man, one that's capable of making great decisions. You've already made a lot of great decisions already in your career, but you're set up 
you have the skill set that sets you up for the corporate world world. And I know that if you have that skill set, which you develop through sports, that you develop through your own business, your own entrepreneurism, those are the skill sets that are going to make you super successful in the next part of your life. And so congratulations. I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you as well, man. Not a lot of uh, you know people have the ability to transition from where they're at right now and go through that identity foreclosure and then come out on the other side and be successful. I think you have the world certainly ahead of you and super happy for you, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Of course. I appreciate it.